Hi, I'm Dr. Siavash Arani, MD. I'm going to provide you a practical uh, approach and what we need to do in case of the coronavirus. And today I'm going to talk about the pulse oximeter. I know you have a lot of information out there, a lot of uh, friends and uh, family, everybody sharing information online from different, uh, different uh, shorts. But I'm going to give you practical uh, what you really need to do, what you really need, need to know in, in case this cause problem for you. Um, I invented the treatment method for complete eradication of human papillomavirus related tumor uh, in United States. So uh, we don't train anybody to treat coronavirus. This is a new to humanity. So uh, we don't have any specific doctor who does it, but uh, or a doctor who has experience uh, in the fields of infectious disease are uh, better uh, doctors that you ask them a question and, and, and they're more practical, they see patients. Now, I'm gonna talk about the pulse oximeter uh, today and the value of that for uh, providing information for you when you're at home and what, need, what you need to do. Okay, so here we go. The pulse oximeter, these are devices come in different shape and sizes and that's how they usually look like in emergency room or, or uh, an urgent care, some that are smaller maybe, and, but in hospital setting and the ICU intensive care units come part of the monitoring and they're a little bit bulkier and bigger, but thanks to technology, that are smaller and cheaper. You can purchase it. I put the link for you to buy. So uh, I will tell you what, how it's gonna be val provide valuable information for you and your doctors. When the blood goes to the lung, it has about 60 to 80 percent oxygen it get, gets mixed with oxygen in the lung and leave the lungs with uh, arterial system with about 100 percent oxygen so you leave the lungs with 100 percent oxygen that oxygen goes to your brain go to your muscles go to different organs and pro provide oxygen so you can survive um, uh, the pulse oximeter measure the oxygen saturation when the blood lives in arterial system so it has two different types of the light in two different wavelengths and this wavelengths one detect the pulse so you know this is an artery arterial blood and the other one uh, uh, detect the uh, has a sensory sense uh, has, has has sensory and uh, uh, sensor that um you will detect the intensity of the light uh, let me see okay the intense first you detect the pulse and um the sensor will detect the intensity of the light and so in order to uh, calculate the oxygen level inside your blood. So in this case, I'm going to show it to you. Mine is about 99%. So the other one is 97% is the pulse that's not the subject matter. The 99% is the oxygen saturation. So why does it provide value to you? Okay, when you have coronavirus infection, the coronavirus is a respiratory infection it will trigger your immune system to fight against it. So sometimes when you have a very, very strong immune system and you have a strong immune response, you produce a lot of cytokines and inflammatory process started and fluid get filled, inflammatory fluid filled, get filled in lungs and that impair the oxygen perfusion. This is what I think uh, our, the children, young age or maybe a little bit older uh, age, they might, not, they're not really dying of the coronavirus as much as many as the young adult, uh, middle age, 30, 40, 50, because I think those people will have a stronger immune system to respond and fight, and this ultimately take person's life. The current um, uh, research and clinical trial are do on those medicine to suppress your immune system in this area, so you don't produce uh, inflammatory fluid, so increase the survival rate. And later on, I explained about what other treatment uh, method or clinical trials ongoing about this process. So, uh, and this issue is our immune system causing the problem. Now, when the blood, the more inflammation we have inside the lung, the oxygen perfusion will get impaired. Less oxygen will leave the lung and less oxygen saturation. And that's where the pulse oximeter will come to the picture. Because you can stay at home and you put it on your finger, and it detects the oxygen saturation in your blood. Now, if you're 98%, 99%, but mine was like 99, 100%, then you're okay. 
you're 97%, you're okay. But if you see the number drops 96, 94, 95, you might still feel fine with 92, 91. You might still feel well, but you will, uh, you will start feeling a symptom when you're pushing toward 88, 87, 80, then you really feel uh, dizzy and really bad. But at the beginning, you might be just dizzy, but not uh, as drowsy, but that's how you see doing horrible videos and other country and China people uh, in the corner of the street, they pass out because they don't get enough oxygen in their uh, brain. So, but this will detect it at home. So you see the number, you can see the value. If it's going higher, if it's going lower, uh, uh, if you need to see your doc, and when you contact your MD, you can tell them to your MD, this is my oxygen saturation level. So you can uh, assess the situation. If you go to the hospital, if you're positive for coronavirus, they send you home. So you're at home, you don't know if things are getting bad or not. They just tell you maybe if you get um, shortness of breath, come back to the hospital. That's mainly they, what they tell you. So, but this will monitor you, even if you're not short of breath, what is the exact value of oxygen in your blood? And you just use one battery, double A battery or two double, triple A battery, and very simple device. Um, so, when you are the number is usually in a 70 percent 80 percent that's the time we usually try to take the patient to the icu and and intubate the patient but there are the other elements that uh, we check but this is this is where we start but you can have that at home and monitor yourself as and you're looking for the 98 97 99 100 96 around that if it goes lower you know it might have a problem and 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 many times if we're gonna have a cold. I mean, I, I don't think this virus is gonna leave us alone soon. It just was introduced to humanity, but and it might be around for a while, you know, like polio, like measles, we were not able to control it unless we made a vaccine. And that's how we control the polio on the earth. So hopefully we make the vaccine soon to control this. But if he's going to be around, you might catch cold, a common cold, and we are at home and you don't know. You have cold, you have coronavirus, you don't know, and you have to go and get tested. You might get exposed to other people who are in testing centers. You have to be very careful. But this is also provide the information to you. Beside the thermometer that check your temperature, if you have a fever and you check your oxygen level, that's for what another element of information. Hope this video helps you and, and if you have any question, any problem, you can contact your medical doctor.